Thanks for the great introduction. And uh, thanks for the organization committee of ESURS and Oculus for having me today. So I'm Hui Tran from Vietnam, the practicing ophthalmologist in Ho Chi Minh City, Vietnam. So it's my great pleasure to be here and to uh, present about the use of Myopia Master for the actual length, uh, a key value, but not only for cataract surgery. Actual length and biometric data have been well established in uh, eye care community with multiple application uh, from, for many uh, ophthalmic disciplines to diagnose, to calculate, and to monitor uh, various eye disease and uh, disorders, and myopia is one of them. We all know that myopia is now a global public health issue which, in which the prevalence of myopia is estimated to affect about 50% of the world population by 2050. And myopia control treatment is imperative. And how, we do, how do we me measure and how do we monitor the progression of myopia? We go back a little bit of the current definition of myopia. Nearsightedness is, uh, it can result from a, a mismatch between the refractive power of the ocular refractive components and the length of the eye bolt. Uh, when the ocular accommodation is fully relaxed, and it then results in the focus of the image in front of the retina, therefore the blurred distance vision. Currently, myopia has been classified into three groups, including the axial myopia due to the excessive axial elongation, the refractive myopia due to the high power of the lens and the uh, steeper cornea, or the secondary myopia due to all the cornea or systemic disease. Recently, evidence suggests the six steps for clinical ev evaluation in the case where uh, in in the case for the kids with the, for the children with myopia, and the fir, the very first key step is identify is to identify the true axial myopes, which might be proving the central role of the axial length in the development and the progression of myopia. Another reason is that ax excessive axial elongation has been proven to be highly associated with the higher risk of myopia. Uh, with a higher risk of visual impairment in later phase of their life. Indeed, recent evidence for, for, for the Euro, from the European population has shown that the longer axial length may result in significant higher risk of visual impairment, especially when the axial length exceeds the number of 26 millimeters, uh, even longer. Other evidence in Asia country, uh, in 2019, a study, a study for, uh, uh, data, a result from data of a Hisayama study from over 3,000 Japanese, uh, Japanese residents, the authors in Japan suggest that there was, a light, there was a higher risk of developing myopic maculopathy when the actual length exceeds the number of 25.9 millimeters in males and 25.3 millimeters in females. The results were also aligned with what we observed in the clinical evidence from China that with the same level of myopia, the female participants tend to have a shorter eye length and a steeper cornea. Myopia has been worldwide accepted to be monitored, uh, to be monitored and to be diagnosed with the change in spherical equivalent. However, with the development with, uh, of advanced technology, Although spherical equivalent and axial length are highly correlated from multiple evidence, nowadays, axial length becomes a more reliable and repeatable measurement compared to spherical equivalent with following reason. First, the stretching of the eyeball and the axial elongation is are the nature of myopia. Second, there's multiple evidence proving that axial length measurements are more repeatable and reliable parameter compared to what we observe in the change of the measurement of this uh, spherical equivalent. And the third, now there's enough number of evidence that show the strong relationship between the excessive uh, axial elongation and the level, the, the level of excessive axial elongation and the risk of visual impairment in later phase of their life and the risk of developing the myopia related disease. Go back to axial length measurement by the optical biometry is more accurate than refractive measurement. 
In fact, there's number evidence showing that while the limit of agreements between the measurement of spherical equivalent range between plus or minus 0.5 diopters, the range of variation between the measurement of actual length range between plus or minus 0.5 millimeters, equivalent to point, plus or minus 0.12 diopter, which was significantly less than what we observed with the variation between the measurement of spherical equivalent. Another interesting point is here is we should acknowledge the work from Brian Holden Vision Institute team, we, we may see on this graph that the vertical axis is for the spherical equivalent, while the horizontal axis is for the axial length. The axial length for the emetropes or plano of refractive errors on, right on the horizontal axis can range from 21.5 millimeters to 25.5 millimeters. And the, so that the axial length alone is not useful to detect the myopia. Moreover, to diagnose myopia, we, I care practitioner should take care and should consider all the parameters, including age, the gender, uh, and corneal curvature. And um, recently, an, another ratio, another parameter have been proven to be more sensitive to diagnose myopia is the, axio, the ratio of axial length over the corneal radius, especially with the younger age. Another time, we acknowledge the work from the Brian Holden Vision Institute that we may see over here. On, we may see, we may see over here that a ten a ten year old girl with the axial length about twenty five millimeters and the ALCR ratio about three point one. This girl have would have about eighty seven percent of the probability rate of being myopic when and, and the rate would increase significantly to 98% when the ALCR would be 3.2. Therefore, to optimize the, the diagnosis and the monitoring of the progression of myopia, I care practitioner, I highly recommend to consider the, the set of the factors, including the age, genders, spherical equivalent, axial length, and ALCR ratio. And uh, for, that, for those reasons, so to fit into the myopia control practice, so we, we would like to have a tool that can measure not only the refraction, but also the keratometry and the biometry with the aim to diagnose myopia, to monitor and to predict myopia progression, and to evaluate the efficacy of the treatment. With that respect, myopia, uh, myopia appear to fulfill the scope of the work with the key measurement in addition to the comprehensive analysis of the myopia progression with respect to both spherical equivalent and axial length. Go back to a, a capture in the, in the case, in the clinical case at our clinic. With one capture, the result include the axial length, the uh, refraction, and the keratometry. The keratometry can be displayed either with diopters or with millimeters. We can then easily calculate the ALCR for each, for each of the case to have a better understanding about the condition of myopia. Go back a little bit of the great work from the team of BHVI that we may see that one level of spherical equivalent, one level of myopia can result from a large range of axial length. And the message is not every minus two diopter kit can share the similar risk of visual impairment in later phase of their life. And we also measure about more than 3,000 of measurement in Vietnamese, in the Vietnamese children with, from the different age group uh, with our system of myopia master. And the, the similar pattern was also shown. And you may see over here that the vertical axis is for the spherical equivalent, while the horizontal axis is for the actual length. And we may see that for the level of myopia about minus one or minus two, the axial length range between 22.5 to 26 millimeters. Yet uh, for another time, not every minus two children with myopia share the same risk of visual impairment in later phase of their life. And we should take care, not only spherical colon, but also other parameters. We, to, uh, to, um, 
to review the repeatability and reliability of the measurement from the myopia master, we did have a chance to compare a small sample size of the measurement between our system of myopia master with another biometers. And we may see over here the, from the, for the children aged between 6 to 13 years old with myopia, and we may see the difference between the two eyes uh, are quite sub substantially low. And the difference, uh, the mean difference of actual length was about 0.02 millimeters and the 95% confidence of uh, interval range between minus 0.01 to, to 0.05 millimeters. Another interesting point with the, the system of myopia master is the, that the GRAS uh, system is the gold strain refractive analysis uh, system in which all refractive, all the ocular refractive component, including the cornea, the lens, and the axial length, were systematically reviewed to have a better understanding and to comprehensively analyze the condition of myopia at the beginning and over the treatment. We, we, we plot a graph from our measurement to see how exactly each of the refractive components contribute to the total refraction. You may see on this graph on the right hand side is the graph to see about the auto, the auto refraction versus the GRAS refraction. There was a significant high, uh, there was significantly high correlation between the refraction. It showed that the GRAS refraction result from the total refraction from the, all the ocular, uh, ocular um, ocular refractive components, but not only one. The left-hand side is, uh, there was the, the correlation between the autorefraction and the GRAS the actual length. You may see that over here, that there was a moderate to high correlation between the autorefraction and the GRAS actual length. It has, it's proving, it was proving that there was a central role of, of the actual length refraction in contributing for the total refraction. However, the data also show that the cornea and the crystalline lens may also have the role to play in contributing for the total refraction. For example, we go for a clinical case in our clinic. There was a 12 years old girl coming to our clinic with the refraction about minus 7.5 to minus eight diopters, both eyes. But go back to individually analyze each of the refractive component, including the flat cornea and the crystalline lens, a little bit of hyperopic, we may, we may observe that the axial myopia is up to, is estimate up to nine, minus eight, 9.5 to 10, minus 10.5, significantly higher than the one we see on the total refraction. Therefore, each of the kits should be met, should be individually managed after carefully review the whole set of the criteria and the parameters, including the age, uh, risk factors, age, gender, axial length, spherical equivalent, and the GRES analysis. Similar, uh, the same, the same patient, but it, at the beginning, we may see on the graph of the progression right at the time of the initial uh, assessment, we may see that how much higher of the actual length of this girl above the, curvature, uh, curvature, the normal curvature of the normal range of the population at her age. And it also showed the estimate number of the spherical equivalent and actual length in the later phase of her life when she reached the adulthood. Over the treatment, with or without treatment, the progression of myopia might be changed. And then the estimate number of the progression for myopia and the actual length could be, uh, could be amended accordingly. Another good point from the myopia master, what I like the most, is the way that how we can pick out the actual length growth and the estimate actual length growth over the time length where we exactly would like to observe the progression of myopia in each particular case. For example, in, in this case, is uh, the nine year old boy. They, he came into our clinic and followed for a one year. You may see that how we manage them and how we can see, observe the, the progression growth for them, for him. Over here, you may see that this is the actual length growth and the estimate annual actual length growth over a year with our follow-up. 
Uh, but for this one, we may see the similar number with the actual length growth and the estimate actual length growth for the very first six months. And here's as for the second six months. And based on that, we can clearly compare the number and the progression of the second phase to the first, to the previous phase. Therefore, we, we can see that how efficient our treatment goes. And do we need to amend the treatment Accordingly, do we need to add on another treatment for the combination therapy or do we need to change to another therapy rather than the current one that we, that we are currently applying for these kids? Moreover, evaluating the risk factors, including the number of parental myopia, the outdoor time activities and the near work activity time in addition to the school work time and the age of onset are always essential for myopia control treatment and myopia management. So in summary, axial elongation is the nature of myopia progression. Axial length, this, it, is, it is a value parameter for screening, for monitoring and for evaluating myopia in addition to the ALCR ratio. Myopia ma ma master incorporate the main parameter for diagnosing myopia, including the refractive error, the actual length, the corneal curvature, and the lens, also the risk factors. The percentile curve of the actual length help us to understand the normal of eye growth, to predict the myopia progression, and to track the efficacy of the treatment, and to give us some idea that do we need to change, or do we need to go up to the combination therapy. And finally, the myopia report is a comprehensive document for parents, but also for the eye care practitioner. We do hope that in the future, if the myopia system, myopia management system could be incorporated in the same system with this, and therefore, with that, with that end, we can have one system, only in one, then can, we can manage, but not, not only with cataract surgery, but also for refractive surgery and myopia management. So thank you for your kind attention.